Gentlemen, if you could please take your seats. For those who aren't yet seated, thank you very much. A uh, recent check of the number of voters who have checked in reveals Precinct 1 is 20, Precinct 2 is 31, Precinct 3 is 30, Precinct 4 is 38, Precinct 5 is 31 for a total of 150 registered voters. We have a quorum here at Abington High School. I'd like to call first the special town meeting of May 21st to order pursuant to a warrant that was issued by the uh, Board of Selectmen to either the constables of the town of Abington, greetings in the name of the Commonwealth. You're hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town who are qualified in town affairs to meet at R Abington High School at 201 Richard Francis, Francis Glenowitz Way in Precinct 5 of said Abington on Monday, the 21st of May, 2012, at 7 in the evening. The warrant was signed by a majority of the Board of Selectmen, and it was properly served in accordance with our town bylaws. Uh, we have 10 articles in the special town meeting, and we also have 12 articles to finish in our annual town meeting, which was continued from April 2nd. So at this time, with the consent of the body, I'm going to declare that the special town meeting is in order, but is now going to be put into recess until the annual town meeting is recessed or dissolved, and we will now reopen our annual town meeting to complete our review of the remaining muddy articles and to set the town budget for the coming fiscal year. And again, I'd like to establish there are 150 uh, registered voters here to set the quorum for the annual town meeting. At this time, I'd ask you to all rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone should have uh, received the warrant in the mail, but for tonight, on the back tables along the rear wall, you should have picked up two items. One is a, a book that's folded, uh, it says Finance Committee Recommendations along the top. The first page uh, describes it as being the special town meeting, and if you actually look through it, in, uh, the first special town meeting contains 11 pages. The 12th page is the annual town meeting Finance Committee recommendations and warrant articles that we'll be holding uh, in discussion tonight. Secondly, you should have picked up the budget motion. It says Finance Committee recommendations across the top. It says budget motion and budget handout in the middle of the page. This is what we'll be using to actually go over the town budget tonight during our annual town meeting. So I would direct your attention once again to the handout entitled Finance Committee recommendations, but turn to the 12th page so that we'll all be starting on the Finance Committee recommendations May 21st, 2012, adjourned session of the annual town meeting. It is numbered page one, but it is physically the 12th page. Everyone know where we are? Okay. First of all, I want to welcome uh, State Representative Jeff Deal, who is here tonight meeting the voters, along with Congressman Stephen Lynch and State Representative Candidate Bob Toomey. Senator John Keenan did call and offer his apologies. He's not feeling well tonight, so he was unable to attend. I want to welcome everyone to the continuation of this annual town meeting and the special town meeting, which will immediately follow the conclusion of this annual town meeting. My name is Sean Riley, and I'm the town moderator. It's my responsibility to preside over and regulate the discussion of tonight's articles, which will appear in the warrant document that was made available to every voter in Abington. As I mentioned, additional copies of the warrant and finance committee recommendations are available in the rear of the gym. On behalf of myself and town clerk Linda Adams, we welcome you to tonight's town meeting. We're very happy that you've taken the time to be in attendance to take part in your democracy. For those of you who regularly attend our meetings, we greatly appreciate your continued dedication to the well-being of our town. Tonight we're going to do our best to move the meeting along while also providing reasonable time to allow for open debate and answer your questions. We will we'll be proceeding tonight to finish your review and the voting of the remaining 12 so-called money articles from the annual town meeting, including the FY13 town budget and Article 3. Upon the conclusion of the annual town meeting articles, we'll then dissolve the annual town meeting and reopen our special town meeting to address the 10 articles which were printed in that separate warrant, warrant document. Please let me introduce, of course, our town clerk, Linda Adams, and our town council, Mr. Joe Fair, who's sitting on the far side of the table to my left. Mrs. Adams will be serving as the clerk of this town meeting and will be recording the wording of any motions and the results of any votes taken by you, the resident voters. Seated to my right are the members of the Abner Finance Committee. The Finance Committee is comprised of residents who volunteer their time to review and analyze each article, which is to be voted on here at town meeting. And in just a few minutes, I'll ask the chairperson of the Finance Committee to introduce the Finance Committee members. Again, the rules of town meeting, for those of you who are new, uh, we ask that you abide by the following rules. 
or simply listen to the debate. Number one, please raise your hand if you'd like to speak, and I, as the moderator, will recognize you at the earliest available moment, and we ask you to stand and speak, but please use one of the two microphones, the one in the middle or the one right up here in the front. Please give your name and address before you begin speaking so that the town clerk can properly record the minutes of this town meeting. Please make sure to keep all comments and questions relevant to the subject matter of the article being discussed. Do not make any personal attacks into the debating of an issue. If the moderator believes that a speaker is straying from the issues, I have I will have to direct the speaker to limit their portion of the debate to the issue, and we also ask that speakers limit their time to the microphone so that others will have an opportunity to speak and be heard. A motion to so-called move the question will be taken up as any other motion from the floor, and for those of you who are new to town meeting, a motion to move the question is a request to end all debate and to move directly to a vote on the article. But to move the question, a person must be recognized first by the moderator, and the motion to move the question must be immediately mentioned. You cannot take the microphone, recite your opinion on an article, and then try to shut off the debate of others by moving the question at the end of your remarks. Please also understand that the moderator has a right to rule any motion to move the question out of order. If I believe the motion is unfairly or prematurely limiting a voter's rights to hear answers to questions or to better understand an article or an amendment. Only registered voters of Abington may vote here at town meeting and take part. Any non-resident or non-registered voter is required to sit in the bleacher section back in the, the far left, which I've uh, outlined with the pink tape and the big sign. If you are a registered voter, you are urged and you must sit on this side of the pink tape. Department heads and members of the press are allowed to sit here to my far left. Any person who is not a resident but wishes to address the town meeting must first be recognized by the moderator and have approval of a majority vote of the members of town meeting before speaking. But in accordance with our town charter, non-resident department heads and superintendents who work for our town will be allowed to speak or answer questions if requested, and they may also sit and consult with their relevant committee or board. I've appointed four tellers to help with any counts we may have to do tonight. Mr. Joe Shea, who will count all votes cast in the bleacher section to my left, not counting the department heads and not counting the non-registered voters. Mr. Bruce Hughes will count all the votes cast in this section of chairs to my left where Bruce is sitting, and also he will count the tellers working for the town clerk's office on the other side of the ropes. Um, Mr. Henry DeCarlo will count all the people who are sitting in this section of chairs to my right, and Mr. Russ Esau will count all those in the bleachers and the votes of the Finance Committee. I need to appoint a deputy moderator for this evening, and I therefore ask you to approve the appointment of Mr. Bob Kelly as deputy moderator, so that'll be our first vote. All those in favor of nominating Bob Kelly as our deputy moderator, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed say no. All right. The ayes have it. Understanding many of you have babysitters at home, we ask that you turn down your cell phone ringers and take any phone conversations out into the hallway so as not to disturb those seated around you. And please understand that in order to debate or discuss an issue at tonight's meeting, the subject must be in the warrant in the form of an article. Tonight, the Finance Committee and others will be presenting their motions to either approve an article as it was originally printed, or to propose amended wording with updated information, or to oppose an article which we call passing over an article. So, at this time, I'd like to introduce the Finance Committee Chairperson, Maureen Jansen, ask that she introduce the remaining members of the Finance Committee, and then we will start with the first article of the annual town meeting, which will be Article 2A on page one of the Finance Committee recommendations. Maureen? Thank you. Is that on? Okay, thanks. Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you for attending tonight's continuation of the annual town meeting and the special town meeting. Let me just take a moment to thank and acknowledge the town manager, his finance team, consisting of the assistant town manager, the deputy assessor, the collector, treasurer, the town clerk, and the interim town accountant. I would also like to thank the department heads and their staff, along with the school department administration and the school committee for working together towards a budget and for everything they do each day in support of our town. I also wish to acknowledge and, thanks and thank the Finance Committee seated to my right, um, Sean Tyler, Rick Franey, Stephanie Eastwick, Barbara Cristoforo, Michelle Christian Oldham, Chad Lovett, Cindy Whiting, um, sorry, Kathleen, uh, Kathleen Cahill, and of course our um, recording secretary, Deb, Li Deb Libby. Also wish to acknowledge um, all you who have decided to come this evening and thank you for your continued, con uh, your continued support and interest in our town politics. Um, and back to the Finance Committee, these volunteers have spent a tremendous amount of hours getting to know these budgets and these articles before you. We've met with department heads, other committee me members, warrant article petitioners, members of the public who have decided to attend our meetings. All this so that we are prepared to present to you tonight 
a budget which is balanced and in addition to being balanced is carefully thought out uh, and it attempts to be fair and balanced to all departments. And tonight we're going to do two things. We're going to continue the discussion and make decisions regarding the setting of the budget for fiscal 2013. And we'll also be asking you to approve some housekeeping matters for the current fiscal year in the special town meeting after the conclusion of this annual town meeting. You may recall back in April, we were unable to present a full and complete budget. Now six weeks later, the finance committee, the town manager, the town finance team, and the board of selectmen feel that we have enough data to come to you with a balanced budget. We'll be asking for you to consider this budget later in the meeting um, and all the funding allocations to the town departments and to the school department. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Jansen. Unless there's anything to be heard up front, I'd like to proceed immediately with Article 2A in the annual town meeting, which is to see if the town will vote to amage, amend the wage appendix in the classification and salary plan effective July 1, 2012, which essentially sets the pay rates and salaries for non-union employees in the town. Ms. Jansen. The Finance Committee moves that the town vote to approve Article 2 as printed in the recommendations. Article 2A as printed 2A. in the recommendations. Thank you. Is there anything to be heard on the, the motion for Article 2A to approve Article 2A as presented? If not, all those in favor of approving Article 2A as, as printed in the recommendations, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those say no. All those opposed say no. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Article 2B, to see if the town will vote to approve the following rates of annual salary. Each year we must set the, the uh, salary for any elected official who is paid by the town of Abington. And that falls to the town clerk. Madam Chair. The Finance Committee moves that the town pass over this article. The Finance Committee recommends the town pass over this article, which would keep your current rate of $60,350. Is there anything to be heard on Article 2B? Moderator recognizes Mr. John Buckley. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I uh, offer the affirmative motion that the article be approved. And I understand the situation that the Finance Committee finds themselves in in relation to the overall budget. But I think that the last four years there has been an, in, an inequity in the town clerk's office relative to the pay scales, not only for the town clerk, but for the assistant town clerk. The, uh, this is the four, going, we're going into the fourth year when the town clerk has not had a pay raise, not unique in some instances in, in, in town government. But there are others who were under contract who did receive pay raises, and there are others who were granted pay raises uh, during, the, during the annual town meeting last year and the year before that, but town clerk has received a no pay raise. The other inequity I find in, in the uh, town clerk's office, uh, Mr. Moderator, is the position of assistant town clerk, where she is compensated at the rate of a part-time town clerk rather than at the rate as suggested in the, bylaw, in the personal bylaw we just adopted at an M3. So that she, she has, the assistant town clerk, has also been the victim, would have seen to me, of an inequity in the, in the pay scales in, in town hall. So I would hope, Mr. Moderator, that uh, the pay raise that uh, the town clerk has suggested, the first one in four years, uh, would be adopted and that the, there is money to do, to do this. Uh, the money amounts to, as you can see from the numbers under Article 2B, to be less than uh, $3,000. There is... So I believe some fourteen or eighteen thousand dollars in surplus at the present time, not a great deal of money in a forty one or two million dollar budget, but I think it's an equity that should be addressed and should be uh, uh, supported. I would hope that it's adopted, Mr. Martin. You wanted that in the form of a motion, Mr. Buckley, to approve you. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. Mr. Buckley makes a motion to approve Article 2B to essentially approve the 3% pay raise, which if I'm doing my math correctly would be a, a raise of $2,049.58. So anything to be heard, we would always take the positive motion first. So anything to be heard on Mr. Buckley's motion to approve the uh, salary increase, 3% salary increase? Nothing? Okay. Well, then we'll have, <laughs> we'll have a vote. Well, yes, sir. Please state your name and address. Phil Russia, 723 Randolph Street. Uh, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of inequities. Uh, the town clerk's not the only one that hasn't gotten a raise in four years. All the town hall employees haven't gotten a raise in four years. And they're also only working 32 hours a week 
for the past four years when they were only supposed to do it for a year. So there is a lot of inequities. Let's all uh, digest that too. It's not just the town clerk. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. DeRocha. Anything other, anything more to be heard in Article 2B? If not, the motion will be to approve the pay raise to the town clerk uh, to the proposed rate of $62,399.58. And that would be raise and appropriate? Raise and appropriate? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Um, the, the budget as it stands is a balanced budget with no surplus. I'm wondering where that money is going to come from. Let me ask, I'll ask the, the questions out there. Is there a surplus, with the budget just being presented with the handout, is there a surplus? Are there remaining funds and how much? There is not. There, there is not, and if it is, it's very small. Maybe, um, I, thought I, I thought I saw a number of like $1,100, but I, 11,000. 11, Moderator recognizes town manager John D'Agostino. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I believe there's about $1,100 surplus in, in the FY13 operating budget as, per, as proposed. But we do have a number of other issues that we need to address as well. Town Manager reports there's approximately $1,100 in surplus right now. The raise would be 2049 and change. Is there anything more to be heard on the proposed motion to approve the salary increase? If not, let's take a vote on the motion. All those in favor of approving the salary increase to $62,399.58, please signify by saying aye. All those opposed say no. No. The noes have it. Article 2B does not pass. Article 3. Article 3 is the town budget, the operating budget, or some people call it the omnibus budget. This is when we're going to now refer to the separate handout, which is Finance Committee Recommendations, May 21st, 2012, adjourned session of Maynard town, town Meeting, budget motion. And right in the middle of the page it says budget handout. The moderator recognizes the chairperson of the finance committee, Maureen Jansen. John, would you like the town manager would like to make your summary of the uh, of the budget? I'd like to ask that the town manager, a representative from the school department, and then the finance committee will give you a kind of a general overview to help you better understand what is being proposed here for the town budget. So again, I'd like to recognize the town manager, John D'Agostino, regarding Article 3. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, as an overview of the operating budget for FY13, I do have a written statement in the handout that you will see. I believe it's... Um, John's, John's statement is at the end of the 10-page town meeting warrant. Uh, there is a two-page letter with a third page for signatures. If you turn your pages beyond page 10 of the annual town meeting warrant, you'll find what John's budget statement is in writing. We are um, proposing in the FY13 budget to have some very moderate increases in the operating budget for the town. You know, when I'm referring to moderate increases, I am referring to a budget that roughly shows a little over a 2.9% increase overall. In relationship to that budget, unlike some of our sister communities who are looking for operational overrides, this budget is balanced without the need uh, for any kind of an operational override. In addition to that, this budget is predicated upon a savings in future budget years, beginning in FY14, of a $340,000 savings in the trash budget. The trash appropriation um, establishes a new automated trash collection service for Abington residents. This trash collection service in the FY13 budget will also expand services to include uh, twice yearly uh, yard waste collection and Christmas tree collection. Those uh, obviously were items that were outside of the budget in previous years and were able to bring it into the budget for FY13. In addition to that, 
we are also looking at a savings for the first time in many years in, in the health care line item. We are looking at approximately a 4.5% uh, decrease in the um, health care budget. If you look at your sheets, if you turn to the two um, pie charts that are out there, you'll see how significant that health care line item is in relationship to the overall budget. It is a very significant increase over the years. This is the first year that I'm pleased to report that there will be a decrease in, in, the, in that budget. And so consequently, with the, um, fall the annual town meeting will be voted in favor of additional revenue th through the meals tax, adding that money into the FY13 uh, budget on an estimated basis, basis of approximately $200,000. We are looking at a, a budget that will be balanced based on revenue and expenditures. We worked very diligently with respect to uh, our finance team and our superintendent of schools. Um, we are also looking at a slight decrease in our property casualty and liability insurance. We expect that that property casualty liability insurance number uh, to be about $151,000. That's not broken out except as a, a total line item. In addition to that, because of our experience in workers' compensation, we do expect an increase in our workers' compensation claims, and as a result of that, there will be an increase in premium in FY13 and FY14. We may have to come back, and depending upon what that increase is, at the fall town meeting to look for additional money to meet that but potential budget gap. We estimated that the savings would, would be, at the time, around $90,000. While our property casualty liability number came in at 151 versus 260, we were well on our way uh, to realizing that savings until we received, very late in the process, an increase in our premium um, for workers' compensation. As a result, our net savings is approximately $33,000. Um, much less than what we had initially anticipated. We're going to have to come back at the fall town meeting to make um, those uh, adjustments. We are um, also not using stabilization to balance the FY13 budget. And we are looking at local estimated receipts of about $180,000 increase. Um, that is a significant reduction in years past. And we do expect that revenue trends are going to equal uh, or level out without any significant increases over the next several years, or I, I would say the, the next two or three years. As a result of that, we have to be extremely cautious as to how we allocate our revenue sources with respect to our expenditures. You will see in this budget that there will be an increase in the highway personnel as highway has taken on added responsibility as it relates to park and recreation or field maintenance. Um, and we are also looking at hiring a part-time uh, secretary for uh, capacity purposes in, in the offices of the um, recreation department. And that is because um, over, over the years we have noticed that there, there's a lot of paperwork that has gone uh, has taken a secondary nature and that paperwork is important uh, to us. In addition, this budget also supports a, a technology um, department that has implemented uh, a new version of KVS, which is our integrated financial software package. That integration will allow us to develop more concise, readable, and understandable budget formats for you in the future. So the the budget was con a consensus budget with a vote of the Board of Selectmen, a vote of the Finance Committee in support, and obviously a vote of the Town Manager's support of the FY13 uh, budget. Are there any general questions that anyone may have regarding the budget? Not yet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not I, yet. I took that role away from me. I didn't mean to do that. Quite all right. Well, I'm sure there may be questions. At this point, thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. I'd like to uh, recognize the chairperson of the Adams School Committee, Ms. Jan Larry.
Thank you. After extensive deliberation and consideration, the school committee voted four to one to request an increase of 130,000 for the Abington students beyond that of the finance committee and the town manager. Although there is no identified funding source and we do not wish to be out of balance, given the current need, it is our responsibility to advocate for better funding for the students. The additional funding could potentially support restored elementary teaching positions, stalled collective bargaining, and or a combination of both. We realize and appreciate the efforts which have been made to support the towns, to support the school by the town and the finance committee. However, due mostly to the Massachusetts funding formula for education, 92% of the communities in our state are funded at a higher level than Abington. This means the students, parents, faculty, and staff have been doing much more with less for years. We want to make it extremely clear the school committee is not advocating for an override or the dismantling of other town services or resources. However, we do feel an obligation to the students and the community as a whole. We feel obligated to make this request and highlight the need for the increased funding for the children in the school system. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson Leary. At this point, I'd like to recognize the Chairperson of the Abington Finance Committee, Ms. Maureen Jansen, and upon the conclusion of her remarks, we will proceed right to the motion on the budget for article of Article 3. Thank you. The general, sorry, the general budget which will be presented to you totals $39,898,811.98. While this general fund budget is 3.8% higher than fiscal 2012's budget, it is in no means a restorative budget. For instance, it does not provide for all the staff and services the town needs. What this budget does is it addresses some of the past shortfalls by fortifying core services and programs. As a foundational budget, this budget does not cut staff or services from any department. It provides for a balance of support for our town. We have a long road to go to restore our services to where they used to be and to ensure our town's continued growth. It's important to note that this budget is also relying upon some savings that the town is anticipating through the new trash contract, savings attributable to liability insurance and health insurance costs. Ultimately, we hope that you will agree that this budget is what the town can afford, given the anticipated savings and revenue we expect for 2013. I encourage you to remain involved and educated with regard to your town management. We hope that future economic conditions and attentive expense controls will allow for increased staff, services, and funding. Only time will tell when we will be able to increase funding for additional staff, services, and salary increases. But for now, we have allocated your precious tax dollars the bet in the best manner we can. We thank you and appreciate the support you have given to us and to this process. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. At this time, again, I will direct your attention to the budget handout the budget motion. Maureen will now be reading the motion on the top part of the page and we will proceed thereafter to go through the different pages of the budget. Maureen. Thank you, Sean. The Finance Committee moves that the town raise to appropriate, sorry, the Finance Committee moves that the town vote to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds and appropriate from departmental receipts such sums as are necessary to defray salaries and expenses of the town for fiscal year 2013 all as set forth in detail in the budget handout. Thank you, Maureen. So the motion is to approve the budget as it's provided here on this budget handout. And in the bottom of the first page there, you'll see some of the sources of the revenue. Uh, and if you turn the page, you'll see the beginning of the spreadsheet. Uh, it starts with the title of general fund, which lists now how the money is being allocated through the various departments in the forms of salaries and expenses. What I'd like to do, is as we've done in past town meetings, we have essentially four pages of budget information. And I'd like to ask, we'll pay, take it page by page. If anyone has a question on page one, I'd like you to just tell me what line item, what department you'd like me to set aside. If there are no questions on page one, we'll turn to page two and see if there are any questions there. If anyone has a question or if anyone has an amendment, the time to bring it up would be while we're on that page. And as after we get through all four pages, we will then take one final vote to approve the budget as it's printed or to approve the budget as it may have been, been amended by the folks here tonight. So looking at now the first page of the budget, the first page of the spreadsheet, 
looking from department number 1130 town meeting and going down and including 1450 treasurer collector, not including town council. Are there any questions on any of these line items? Mr. Malika? Yes, um, I would like to make the motion to- uh, Hold on, just look, first just let me know which one you want to talk about. Uh, Sluckman's uh, budget uh, 1220. Okay, 1220, is there? Just the point, he didn't recognize, he didn't give his name and address. Thank you, one second. Anyone else have any other items on this page? Yes, ma'am, what would you like to? Fourteen ten. Thank you. Any other items on this? Just so I can make make sure I go back to these for you. Okay. If not, uh, the moderator will recognize the gentleman with the microphone. Please state your name and address, sir. Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Paul Molica, one fifty two Presidential uh, Drive. <clears throat> I would like to make the motion to move from the uh, Selectman's uh, um, budget number twelve twenty salaries and wages to the school department number thirty ten salaries and wages the sum of eighty thousand dollars. Over the, the reason for that, over the past uh, several years, uh, police, fire, school department, park and rec, council on aging, library, etc., have all uh, encountered significant uh, budget decreases, with the exception of the uh, Sluckman's, uh, Sluckman's office. I think the uh, town of Abington is not big enough to have a uh, town manager and an assistant town manager. Uh, maybe the proper mix at some point might be the town manager or the, maybe another uh, administrative assistant. But in the meantime, I think the, uh, the town is, uh, is, is small enough that the uh, town manager should be able to do the job. Uh, I think that um, this will uh, force those changes to be made. And if it doesn't work, come back in the fall and, and we'll take a look at it. But I think the, uh, I think the motion is appropriate for, uh, uh, for today. Thank you, Mr. Malika. Mr. Malika makes a motion to reduce the selectman salary line item by $80,000 and to increase the school department line item by 80,000. And let me, I, I was neglectful in not pointing out, tonight we are gonna be voting to approve the, the column which is FY 2013 proposed. You see three columns, 2011 actual, 2012 budget, 2013 proposed. We are voting tonight whether to approve or amend the column 2013 proposed. The other two columns are there for your information so you can track recent history. Moderator, I'd like to recognize Mr. John D'Agostino. Mr. Moderator, thank you very much. I would, I would like to address the issue of um, the recent comments regarding the assistant town manager's position because that is indeed what we're talking about. While that issue has been a political football for a number of years in this community, I as an administrator can first and foremost tell you that this position in the size of this town cannot be handled by one person and one person only. If you look at many of the departments in this commute in this town, if you look at the superintendent and his his staff, if you look at the um, fire department and his staff, or the police department and their staff, um, most of those positions, though most of those departments have assistant positions. And so the question for me becomes one in which, why is this an issue? Uh, I can't answer that. I can tell you from my perspective as an administrator, if I don't have necessary support in my department, then we're going to set the town manager's office up for failure. At what expense? And at whose cost? My understanding is that this budget is balanced, that the school department needs money, and so doesn't the fire department and the police department. But we can only operate within the confines of what we have for available cash. And we uh, administer that money and we appropriate it pragmatically. I can tell you that we just opened up Station 2. And we did that because we're pragmatically able to not slash and burn departments, but able to add individuals on a pragmatic basis to get us to our objective. My next objective is obviously to work on the police department. But I'm not going to work on funding the police department at the expense of the school department or the highway department or the town clerk's budget or the um, uh, town uh, collector treasurer's budget or the assessor's budget. 
And so while some may think that we don't need an assistant town manager's position, I know based on my experience, because I'm there every day, that if there is no town manager there, it is physically and virtually impossible based on the workload that is necessary to perform the day-to-day -day functions of that department to do that with just a town manager. And I would ask you to please consider seriously the need for that position. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. Is there anything else to be heard on Mr. Mollica's motion to reduce the selectman salary by 80000 and to increase the school budget by 80000 Anything more to be heard on that motion? Yes, sir. Please state your name and address. Phil DeRussia, 723 Randolph Street. Um, money's a big problem. It's a big topic. Uh, we've got the town manager hiring uh, new town highway people, police, fire. We need them. They're lifesavers. They've been at my, wife, my house a few times to save my, my wife's life, so I got all the respect in the world for the fire department. Uh, before we start hiring more highway guys and everything else, it seems like everyone's back to normal in the town. And I don't, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you get people in that town hall that are working 32 hours. They're supposed to be working 35. That's all I got to say. So, you know, have a little respect for the people who work in the town hall. They were the first ones to come to bat for the town when it hit the fan. Thank and, you. And, and now, because of a certain union, every town hall employee might as well have mass health. Thank you, Mr. Rocha. Would you like Mr. moderator recognizes if I, the If I may address manager. that, the issue with respect to the hours of operation in the town at the town hall is something that is part of a union negotiation process. And we are hopeful that we can conclude that union negotiation process with our restoration of hours uh, for the clerk's positions in, in town government. And in doing so, we may be able uh, to open Monday night uh, and allow residents to come to town hall at a, on a Monday night when they're not working uh, to conduct the business of the town, or th of their business with the town. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. Is there anything to be heard on the motion regarding the transfer from the salary on the selectmen to the school department? Nothing more than we'll take a vote right now on that amendment. Uh, so if you were to vote aye, you would be approving the reduction of the selectmen salaries from by 80,000 and increasing the school department's line item by 80,000. If you vote no, then things will remain as printed. All those in favor of Mr. Malka's motion to reduce the selectmen salary line item by 80,000 and transferring it to the school department, please signify by saying aye. All those opposed say no. no. The no's have it. Thank you very much. Uh, we will proceed now to the question about the uh, Department 1410, the assessors. If you could identify yourself and name and address as you approach the microphone. My, I'm vertically challenged. Hold on. Uh, my name is Maureen Rogers. I'm at uh, 60 Patterson Street, uh, Stone Great Square. I don't really have a motion or anything. I just wanted some clarity as to why uh, you're increasing 6.9% on your assessors when either we're getting nothing these days or maybe around 2 or 3%. I just wanted some clarification as to why you felt that that 6.9% increase was necessary. Thank you. Would anyone like to speak to that information? But Mr. D'Agostino, as town manager, will respond. I'm sorry, Mary Jo, did you have a question? You couldn't hear. Her question was, I uh, just wanted a quick explanation, clarification as to why the assessor's, sal uh, assessor's budget has gone up 6.9% from last year to this year. Am I correct, ma'am? Yeah. Yes. Mr. D'Agostino. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate the opportunity to address this question. If you look at uh, 13, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 1410, the actual increase is going from 185 to 194. Um, there is a, a I'm, I'm, excuse me, 198, I'm sorry. Um, we had an increase in the purchase of services because um, we are in our third year of a, of a reval process. Um, but there is also steps, um, increases for some of the employees in that line item. In addition to that, 
there is an increase which was agreed upon by both town meeting, the finance committee, the town manager, uh, and the board of selectmen to phase in an increase for uh, the department head for both the um, uh, assessor's department as well as the uh, collector treasurer's um, department as well. That, that explains the increase, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. If, are there any other questions on the first page of the budget? If not, we will now turn to the second page, pardon me, which will begin actually with 1510 Town Council, which is a total budget of 54,005, and then we will go down and include 2910 Civil Defense, which is a total budget of $5,000. No, I don't want to vote the pages uh, because in case people want to shift, we want to take one vote at the end. Thank you. So we're looking at now at the second page, town council down through and including civil defense. Are there any items on this page that anyone like to ask a question or offer a motion? If not, we will turn to page three. Oh, oh sorry. Is, are you, Kenny, are you anticipating a third page? Second page, okay, I'm sorry, back here. Second page, we'd like to speak on information technology. 1550, please, yeah. Ken Coburn, 29 Colonel Hunt Drive. Just a point of uh, clarification on the 50% increase on uh, item 1550. Mr. Coburn's inquiring into department number 1550, information technology, inquiring as to why there's a 50.4% increase. Moderator recognizes John D'Agostino. Mr. Moderator, thank you. The, the proposed increases that, that are in information technology deal primarily with proprietary licenses that the town has to secure. Um, I mentioned before in my budget message that we're increasing uh, KVS. We, we've upgraded to a new version of KVS, and with that upgrade came uh, an increase of approximately $50,000 uh, that's paid out over a two-year period of time. And that is for the upgrade from, we were operating in a, uh, in a, a cobalt environment, and we have, we have upgraded to a um, Oracle background. And that upgrade requires us to, to pay for each individual license. We have 50, uh, 50 licenses, and that amount um, equates out to approximately $50,000, 57000 which we are paying out over a two-year period of, of time. So part of that is, is, are those increases. In addition to that, the, everyone remembers the, the problems that we had with our phone system. Well, the problem with our phone system was that we were operating under a beta system for seven years. We never had the actual system installed. So that required a yearly renewal of not only fees, but also um, licenses that allow us to be on the smartphone technology so that when there are upgrades and there are increases, we get them automatically. But that requires us in the information technology line item to make sure that we have enough money in those line items for those proprietary products. That is the lion's share of the increase in the um, uh, information technology line item. It, it, it doesn't deal with increases in, in salaries for employees. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. That answer your question, Ms. Colburn? Great, thank you. Is there any other questions on the second page of the budget? If not, please turn to the third page of the budget. Oh, sorry. On the second page? Sure, if you want to approach the microphone. Just want to remind you once again, if you are, non, if you are not a voter, not a non-registered voter, or if you are not a resident, you must sit in the rear back corner in the area that's marked as non-resident, non-voters, and you're not allowed to vote. Of course, we welcome you here to our town meeting, but unfortunately can't participate. Yes, ma'am. Eileen Beltis, 138 Catherine Drive. There are several departments in, in the town warrant that have post office boxes in the city of Boston. I'd like to know why we have to uh, use the en envelopes that say post office, city of Boston. Thank you, Mr. Beltis. Mr. D'Agostino? I, I think the only, um, that may be our lockbox uh, process that we have for uh, tax bills. That's the only department that I am aware of that has no. a, um, a post office box. Um, no, it's town clerk, uh, it's, uh, the assessors, the treasurer, and Those three that I know of. If they are um, out of town uh, PO boxes, more than likely it is as a result of our collection uh, method, uh, a lockbox uh, method of collection. You can 
avoid that by coming down to town hall and, and paying the bill in person or mailing it to the town hall and we'll take care of it that way. But the reason for the lock boxes are primarily to collect and then get a report back from the collection entities that Could this money has been received. I'm sorry. Could you please explain what a lockbox is? A lockbox uh, probably can be better explained by the uh, treasurer collector, but it is a, a, a payment process. In other words, you're making a payment on your real estate, your your um, assess your um, excise excise tax. Thank you very much. And, and as a result of that, you're making the payment to a, a bank or a financial institution that then processes the payment and provides us with a download tape of what, what, what has been collected, including the, the monies. And so it's another method of collection. So if, excuse me, sir, if you have a post office box, that means someone from the town of Abington has to drive into Boston, waste the gas, take the time, and get paid for it. And, oh, no, 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 uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't explain it properly. I apologize for that. We don't drive into Boston to collect that money. That money is processed by a, a financial institution that we hire on behalf of the town to collect that money. They use the P.O. box. That P.O. box goes directly to a financial institution that processes the payment. We get a tape. So there's no one that drives to Boston under any circumstances. I'm sorry you. if I didn't. If I confused you, I Thank apologize. You. Thank you very much. Is there any other questions from the department's 1510 town council down through and including 2910 civil defense? Not seeing any, please turn your page on the budget and we'll be looking at the page that begins with 2920 animal control officer and we'll go down and include library 6100. Are there any questions with any of the departments listed? Yes, ma'am. 4300. Uh, that's waste collection and disposal. Any any other questions on any other line items on this page? If not, Ms. Prowl, you have the microphone. Jan Prowl, 20 Cleverly Street, uh, B5, Setucket Path Condominiums. It is my understanding that the line item for the budget on the waste collection and disposal under the new trash automated system is now eliminating five condominiums in town here with over 200 homes who have had town trash collection from anywhere from six years to over 20 years. They have relied on this service the town has provided to them. And all of a sudden, I would say four out of the five condo homeowners found out two days before town election that this service was being removed from them as of July 1st. Uh, it was a vote taken by the Board of Health three to two in January. On January 3rd, we didn't meet with the town manager until May 3rd. So for five months, as people were planning to put these uh, financial numbers together, these condominiums, again, that have relied on this town trash pickup for some up to and over 20 years, found out that it is being eliminated. There was a discussion to possibly continue trash collection through the end of the year because it falls in the middle of our budgets. But again, that money we have also found out is not allocated in the line item that is here. So I'm trying to figure out what happens to these five condos, condo associations, excuse me, which again entail over 200 homes, who have just been basically, in quotes, dumped. Nope, no pun intended. What a bing. No pun intended. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Prowl. Town uh, moderator recognizes town manager John D'Agostino. Mr. Moderator, when the town had decided that we were going to um, a two-barrel system, if there are 4,300 residential units that the town will be collecting, there will be a standard that will be established for the 4,300 homes. And that standard is a 64-gallon container for trash, in a 64 gallon container for recycling. It is expected that that will save the town approximately 900 tons. There are 709 total condominium units in the town. And of the 709, 205, quote unquote, are considered grandfathered in. We had received an opinion from town council indicating that the town had the right and the ability to discontinue that service as we do 
and have in the past on any number of different um, services that the town has had in the past that have been dropped or reduced as a result of budget constraints. In this case, it's an issue of fairness and it's an issue of equity. If we're asking the 4,300 residential units in this town to abide by a minimum or a maximum amount of collection, the condominium units and the way they are collected are collected with one dumpster, one for trash. And so they can dump as much trash as they want per unit, which is a different standard. And so what we decided to do is that we decided to work with the condominium association, we'll continue to do so, to try to get a group bid for all of the condominium associations in town. The town is willing to take that initiative on and try to get them one price rather than having each individual condo unit go out and try to get the, the, the best that they can get for a particular uh, price. So what we're hoping to do is to do a couple of things. And, and I sent a letter out last week and I do apologize for the, the, the lag in time between the, the vote at, uh, by the, by the um, Board of Health and the actual meeting that we had with the uh, Condominium Association. The town has made a commitment to the Condominium Association that we are going to continue to work with them to a, resible, to a reasonable resolution. And so we are extending the trash pickup uh, for condominiums until December 31st given us enough time to work with them, go out to bid, and get a, a, a better price per condo association rather than having them go out in, individually. And we're hoping at the end of the day that we can um, eliminate the preferential treatment, so to speak, that has been granted to 205 of the 709 condominium units. There is also another issue relative to not the issue of equity and fairness, but the issue of what happens if the balance of condominium um, associations that didn't receive the trash all of a sudden point to the 205 that do. Um, we then have a bigger issue on our hands. And so as a result of that, we are trying to work cooperatively with the association in an effort to work out an equitable resolution. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. Mr. Prowl? I don't see how this can be equitable when the vote was taken by the Board of Health and put into the minutes of 1992 for these condominiums to have trash pickup. Town Council's opinion is they're not, the town is not obligated to provide trash pickup. Morally, you've been doing it for over 20 years and it's a service that's just going to be cut. And again, with most of the condominiums just having found out in the middle of their fiscal year. Again, with no money budgeted, there was never a plan to continue it, even though no one was told. We'd like to know, you're telling us that there's going to be an enormous cost savings with the new trash collection system. Does part of that cost savings come from the fact that you've dumped the five condominiums that have been having the service from six to over 20 years? The, the actual a total amount we estimate to be 900 tons. There's approximately 200 tons of that 900 tons that come um, you know, from the condo association. When you look at the 207 units, that works out to about a ton a unit, just slow, low, lower than a ton a unit. The problem with that scenario is that our recycling numbers have remained the same. Even though we went from a five barrel to a three barrel limit, and now we're going to a two, um, a two barrel limit, we anticipate with mandatory recycling, which is not mandatory with the condo units, that we expect that we're gonna see a 63% increase in, in, um, in recycling. We expect to receive approximately $25,000 in return under this new contract when the recy with recycling um, and hopefully a recycling increase. And so we're looking for revenue at the same time as we are looking to, to try to, to make it equitable and fair for everybody. But you're Thank looking you, for revenue by taking it away from people that are taxpayers in this town. I would say almost all of those 205 condominiums are two bedroom, 
most of them single family, mm -hmm. okay? The town, the trash tonnage, especially with the recycling that you're talking about, waste solution measures it by looking in the dumpster, okay? Our trash at our condominium is picked up at the exact same time that the trash across the street and down the street is. How can you measure what's being recycled and what not? At our condominium, Setucket Path Condominium, we have mandatory recycling. We have four recycling containers and we have a dumpster. We also just received a letter from your office on Saturday that said further the town is also exploring the possibility of reducing trash tonnage at the condominium complexes by providing a second dumpster for just recycling of which the town would assume the cost to pick up. That's correct. Now, you're telling us when we met with you that you could not come, well, the town could not have waste solutions come on our property because it was a liability for the trucks to come on uh, down a driveway, down a street that is not a town Accepted street. public way. But now you're telling us that, okay, we won't drive the trash truck down there to pick up your trash, but we possibly can drive a recycle truck down there to pick up your recycle, both a dumpster. You're saying that the automated trash puts the barrels on the street, which the homeowners are limited to, but yet the municipal buildings in town will continue to have a dumpster for pickup of the trash there, and how forced is the mandatory recycling in the schools and in all the mis mu yeah, municipal buildings mm -hmm. around. So you're still going to be picking up dumpsters in town. That, that is correct. We've always picked up municipal dumpsters, and the reason for that is that it, it's a municipal service that we're providing, and you are correct in, in, in regards to the fact that you folks are taxpayers just like everybody else. But based on the new program and, and the placement of the barrels, they have to be at least three feet apart from each other. The, the truck has to be able to access the roads that are unaccepted ways in town. We have never plowed um, the condo units, and so there has been a limit on the types of services, services that have been available uh, to condos. What I want to be able to do is to pick up the recycling, which we feel will reduce your tonnage costs and give us revenue income at the other end with respect to um, recyclables, because we now have a contract with the hauler as of July 1st to collect and get paid for uh, recycling items. So it would be to our advantage to want to work something out with you. Okay, but you're still saying you're going to put a dumpster on our private property, which is not a town way. Well, we don't, truck we don't to have to do that. We don't, that, but we don't have to do it. If a truck has to come on the private property to pick up recycle, the truck can come on a private property to pick up trash, just as it does right now, just as it does on all the homes on our street at the exact same time. We're just asking to morally continue something that's been going on for over 20 years and not target the condominiums in town here, especially the five that have had condominium trash pickup again anywhere from six to over 20 years, relied on this by the town to have it taken away completely without any notification to these homeowners who are taxpayers once again in town. You're going to do one to four family homes. Many of those are rental right. units who are not providing taxes to the town. Yes, the homeowner does, but not the ones getting the trash picked up. We just want more consideration taken to this. Hold on one second, ladies and germs, gentlemen. Yes, sir. There isn't a motion on the floor right now. It's all discussion. Um, I appreciate the discussion. I've given you a little freedom to go back and forth, which is not typically my style. One second, sir. Um, I th Ms. Pro, I think you've asked a lot of questions. You've made a lot of answers. Is there anything further you'd like to say? I, I, let me ask you a question for a, Let's just say this budget um, does not include services for the condominiums, the five condominiums you're talking about. It, it does until um, December 31st. Oh, this does include December 31st. Oh, you're shaking your head. You don't. You told us it did not. I no, make a I'm, motion I'm, I'm that sorry, the budget but that, that is not true. The condominiums have been picked up from six to 20 years, all five of the condominiums. I make a motion that we remain the same. Well, let me ask the question, just to get it out on the record, Mr. D'Agostino, whoever can answer this. Does the 1,046,985 1, 
dollars include continued trash service for the five condominium associations that Ms. Prowl is talking about through December 31st of 2012. Ms. Prowl, can I have your letter, please? Can you give me your letter? The one that I just sent you. Mr. D'Agostino has a bad back, so yeah, I know, it's just easier if we can help him out. Moderator recognizes the town manager. Thank you. I am writing to follow up on our joint meeting of Thursday, May 3rd, 2012. The town's position relative to automated trash collection remains unchanged. However, during our meeting, we discussed the possibility of extending pickup until December 31st, 2012, realizing that the condominium association renews contracts at the end of the calendar year, unlike municipal organizations. It is the town's intent to continue to pay the cost of pickup through December 31st, 2012. That's the first paragraph. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. Hold on, Ms. Prowl, just only because there was two other hands. I'll, I'll, yes, sir, in the back. And I believe that's Mr. Beltis will be second. Phil Darasha, 723 Randolph Street. Uh, this program is supposed to be touted as a program to save the town money. Uh, from the get-go, I think it was handled poorly, very poorly. Um, Mr. D'Agostino, can you tell us where you're going to get the money for the totas, for the trash totas, the roughly over $400,000 for the totas? $408,000 for the totas is, right. coming, is coming from the FY13 um, budget. It is budgeted within the FY13 budget. Out of what budget? The trash budget? That's correct. So the trash budget is going to be minus uh, $480,000, like you said? We're getting a $62,000 um, recycling grant for the toters, for the, for the, for the actual recycling do we, do we, portion. Do we have hold, that on, hold, on, hold on, Mr. DeRoche. Let him ask okay. an answer. Go ahead, sir. I, I didn't hear the you, you, I wanted you to continue. He oh, is I'm interrupting sorry. you. You're sorry. $62,000. We're, we're getting, we have applied for a 62000 grant for the toters. We expect to get that grant, which will reduce that cost. It's a one-time cost. It's only in fiscal year 13. In fiscal year 14, when I made my budget presentation, <coughs> we expect to save the 340000 which is, excuse me, the cost of the toters. In addition to that, the actual uh, pickup for both trash and recycling um, is less than 400000 And we have a $66 ton um, for waste collection. We expect that we're going to reduce that waste collection by 900 tons. Um, that number could be higher, it could be a little bit lower, but we're expecting that to be about that, that number. Thank you. Mr. Uh, you. You expect to get the grant? That's correct. You expect it. You, you don't have it for a fact. We won't get the grant until... Um, so this is deficit March. spending. Hold on. No. Hold. Mr. DeRoche, I don't mind you okay, asking questions. Okay. I just Sorry. want to give an opportunity so people sure, can hear sure. the answers. No. It, is, it is not deficit spending. We will not deficit spend. We can't do that by statute, and we're not doing that here. You're taking money out of the trash budget. You, you told the Board of Health you had money allocated for these, for these totas. That's correct. It's and you did not. You did not. You're taking it out of the trash budget. The Board of Health re re refused to sign it twice. Refused to sign what? Your request to take money out of the budget. The money out of the budget is the 408000 for the, the toters. We're going to get $62,000 um, from a grant. You hope. Well, we know we are. Uh, we've been told we are. Well, I just state. asked you that, and you said you didn't know. Hold on. This is not a conversation. This is taking a turn, okay? Just like in kindergarten, we're going to take turns. Um, I thank you for your answers. Do you have any other questions, Mr. Uh, this program is going to cost the town money, and you're not being truthful, and the people that are in the condos are getting it tucked to them big time. Thank and you, you're Mr. not bargaining in good faith with the town hall employees, so don't blame it on the union. That, that's not related to the, the, the waste collection issue right now. You don't have to answer that. Uh, yes, Mr. Beltis, could you name an address, please? Steve Beltis, 138 Catherine Drive. Um, if this is going to be a program that's going to be a cost saving to the town, why is the budget being increased $22,000 this year? Thank you, Mr. Beltis. Mr. D'Agostino? The budget, the budget increase this year is going towards the 
net that we're going to need for the totas and as well as what we estimate for the tipping fee and what we estimate for collection at curbside. So we should expect to see this budget next year down around $600,000 $600, approximately? By, by about 340. Okay. Thank you. Gentlemen? Yes, ma'am. Name and address once again. Maureen Rogers, Stonegate Square, 60 Patterson Street. Um, I have a question. I thought that, uh, I, I don't know who, but I thought I had read somewhere that the Board of Health was going to be re-asked again to take a vote. Did they? Not, not to my knowledge. Okay. I also have a, an email that I sent on April 26 to Sharon. I said, to the past 20 years I've been a resident taxpayer. How can the town say we no longer have our trash picked up? We are residents as well and should be given the same respect. Even in the contract, your contract section 9, indemnification, it mentions condominiums. Why mention a liability when they'll not be responsible for our pickup? I would, I would have to look at that contract to see what I have it what here. It's, your, it's right on the website. I, I, just, I, know, I know it is. I just down. can't answer that no, question. No, okay. It's, it's section 9. It says indemnification. And then it talks about the hold harmless the town, its offices, boards, employees, on and on, single family residence, multifamily complex, multifamily unit, condominium associations, board members, management, and so on. You know, why put it in the contract if, in fact, you're not going to deal with us anymore? So I do have that question. And I'm also a little disturbed that when an email is sent, I'm a businesswoman. And I respond to my emails, whether I like them or not. So whoever Miss White is, if she's here, you should have at least responded to my email. I, so I apologize I, And for also, that. as a, you know, we've been paying taxes. I've been living here for over 20 years. I pay taxes just like anybody else. I give to the firefighters. I give to the police. I have no kids. My trash is minimum. And talking about trash, we recycle, and we do sort of tell people break up your boxes. We have our bins filled all the time as far as our recyclables. So we as, as trash people, we have every right as the regular residents. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. State your name and address. Scott Hickey, 118 High Street. Um, regarding the trash pickup, the, you said that there's the cost for the bins, which is 400 and something thousand dollars that we have to come up with. Isn't, is there Which, additional cost for the new truck that's going to have to pick up these bins? No, it's all part of the contract. And the purpose of this is to get us down to 64, um, whatever that bin holds. It, it's uh, we're, it's two bins, uh, one 64-gallon container for trash and one 64-gallon container for recycling. So why can't we just go down to a 64-gallon limit on trash and not have to go through the cost of Be, because this in? Because the... The, the bins have covers, and the covers are very important uh, to, to load and, and, to, and to the $66 ton figure. And that fluctuates because when it rains and you don't have a container that has a cover to it, the, the trash gets weighted down, and we pay for that tonnage. The, the townspeople pay for that tonnage. With respect to the bins that we're talking about, the handle, the covers are attached to the handles, and the handles, uh, the, the cover will not blow away, the bins will not blow away, the trash that's at curbside now, with respect to recycling, which blows all over the place because of the uh, toters, the, the the little bag, little crates that they have for for recycling, is all going away, and we're going to have a, a a system that is going to be neater, cleaner. And, and more re responsible as it relates to the, the um, so environment. Point, all your trash has to fit in that bin, otherwise it's not going to get picked up. That's correct. And is the Board of Health totally on board with this? My they, understanding is that they are. They don't agree with it. Um, I don't know if the chairman is here and would be willing to speak on behalf of... The chairman is here. He's in a conversation right now. Mr. Manning, the question is, is for Mr. Hickey, is the Board of Health on board with this plan as described by Mr. D'Agostino? The Board of Health voted in January to support this program. What was the vote? Three to two. Thank you. And 
What were the dissenters, what was their argument for not going forward with it? Well, I don't know if we can, we can, maybe that might be more appropriate at a Board of Health meeting. There will be subsequent meetings. I'm sure there's going to be issues that have to be worked out with any change to the system. Uh, if anyone from the Board of Health wants to speak particularly, you're welcome, but I can't require them to do okay. so. Thank but, you. Thank you, Mr. Hickey. Yes, ma'am, your name and address, please. Hi, my name is Susan Morrissey. I'm at 60 Patterson Street. Uh, G38, um, proud owner of a condominium. Um, I've been very happy to live in the town of Abington. I think it's a really sweet place where we really care about each other. Um, I think, you know, not only have I paid my taxes, but I think I've become part of the fabric of this um, town. And I guess for me, um, I want to say there's two issues. One, I think it was very jarring to learn that um, a decision was made to um, fiscally affect condominiums to the negative while other services, additional services, were being delivered to home house owners versus condominium owners. Um, and then I think, too, um, I do believe that there's some discrimination here. I don't know um, really if it was challenged, would it stand up that you can discriminate against a certain group? And then I had the question, if um, I had two questions, one is, um, have they, they, when the decision was being made, did they go out for other bids regarding the condominiums? And if so, what was the bid that was given and what were the other bids that were given, um, at least for the five that were grandfathered in? Um, we have numbers that are much lower than waste management's numbers. Um, and so I'm wondering if that was actually looked at, was, was Troop examined and the other, um, I forget what the other company was that we looked at, but we've, we've talked to folks and it's less expensive. Um, and then secondly, um, if the town chooses to go forward with this and eliminate condominium trash pickup, then aren't we also entitled to get the, um, the trash buckets and the recycled bins because I personally will take my garbage out to Patterson Street before I will let you discriminate against me. Thank you, Mr. Morrissey. Let's try to see if we can answer your question. I think your first question was essentially, was it that did you go out to bid with multiple companies or did you have multiple proposals? Um, I'd like to know what the amount is for those five grandfathered condominiums. What was the dollar amount that we're actually talking about? When I'm thinking about $400,000 for new bins, but we can't afford what Mr. Dion said was maybe $30,000 for all condo pickup, I feel very, very offended by that as a condominium owner and a resident of the town, and I just would like some clarification. Okay. Thank you. So do we know, are you asking, what is the cost to pick up the five condominiums for a year? Is yes, that, and were there multiple bids? Does anyone know? Was that ever calculated? Do we know offhand? That that wasn't that wasn't bid out. Um, we probably would like to do that um, between now and December to try to get a group rate um, on on disposal. Um, I'm not sure that the condominiums are interested in your um, social services um, in this way. I think that having discriminated against our group, I I don't think that there's really sort of an open arm. Um, policy where we're going to really embrace your help here. Because if you were going to help us, this is not how we would ask you to help us. Okay. Anything further for Mrs. Morrissey? You all set? Uh, then, yes, ma'am. Name and address. My name is Ellen Crevison, and I'm also a condominium owner at Stonegate. Um, the argument that a single homeowner <clears throat> would then be only able to put in the 64 gallons in each bin and a condominium owner could put in more in a dumpster. There's a conversion factor in number of gallons of trash equal to so many square yards. And if you look at, if give us 64 gallons a piece and give us a dumpster that size, and we will use that. And if we put in more, charge us. But there is, you can make it so it's fair across the board for a homeowner as well as a condominium owner. Another argument that we heard from the town manager was that not everybody in town uses all of the services that they pay taxes for. A prime example would be schools, and you don't have kids, you don't use those. However, you don't deny a taxpayer access to that service. 
if it's, I can use it if I want to have kids. And I think if I pay my taxes, I should have access to trash pickup just like anybody else. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. And we'll try to wrap up this issue. Go right ahead. Name and address, please. Michael Cunningham, 50 Bicknell Hill Road. I used to be involved with trash contracts, and very basically, the trash contract is two and a half pounds per trash per person per day. And then they deduct the recycling from that. And in the 90s, 28 to 35 percent was paper, which could have been recycled of the trash flow. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, one final thing. There's been no motion on the floor. I hope you were interested in the discussion, but yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Um, one of my questions wasn't answered, so I just wanted to uh, readdress it. So, oh, yes. If there's no recourse um, in terms of the budget and, and the condominium associations, are we then allowed to get the same bins and recycle bins? As I understand it, we're single family homes as well. Um, and I'd like to know how that process will work. Is that a town manager question, or a board of health question, or what is it? I, I will do the best I can to, to try to answer it. If, if it's, um, at this point, all of the condo units are picked up with a, a container, uh, a trash container. There, there is no plan um, at this point to, to do the two barrel limit, um, unless we would have to sit down with each of the unit, the condo association people, and see if this is something that, that can, be work, can be worked out. Um, there, there's an issue with storage. There's an issue that the, that, the, that the barrels have to be three feet apart from each um, bin. So if you have a recycling bin and a trash bin, they have to be three feet apart from each other on the property in order for us to get the arm around the barrel and pick it up auto in an automated fashion. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. There is no question right now. Yes, yeah, we're going to move the discussion. Um, Jan, you're standing. I just want a clarification on one question that was asked. On May 7th at the Selectman's meeting, Selectman Ken Coyle read a letter that he was addressing to the Board of Selectmen, uh, excuse me, yeah, the Board of Health, asking them to reconsider their decision. It was handed to the Board of Health and their we want to know what the reply is because nothing has come back to um, Mr. Coyle and nothing has come back to uh, the uh, condominiums. Moderator, I'd like to recognize the chairman of the Board of Health. <laughs> Mr. Manning, could you state your name and address, sir? We are still talking about Department 4300 Waste Collection and Disposal. Robert Manning, 34 Orange Street, uh, Abington Board of Health Chairman. Um, Mr. Coyle did hand me a copy. My understanding was our, an official letter was supposed to be coming to the Board of Health. Board of Health did not take this vote into consideration. Um, as, I've, as I've heard all the conversation tonight, and what I understand from the town manager, is that the town manager is willing to allow or continue trash pickup at these five condominiums for the next six months while we work out negotiations, whether we hire another trash contractor for them, or do anything else that, that leaves it open. But right now, these condominiums will continue to get their trash picked up for the next six months. And that's my understanding. John, if I'm wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong. All right, so as of right now, the condominiums will continue to get their trash picked up. And we have six months to work out a situation that is not gonna get resolved tonight, obviously. So, well, that, that, if you want to come to the next Board of Health meeting and request a revote, please come to the next Board of Health meeting and ask for a revote. I'm not, argue, I'm not saying you can't. That's what you have the right for. Every citizen has the right to come to my meetings and vote for anything they want to vote for. It doesn't guarantee anything. I'm simply saying if you want to ask for a revote, come to the Board of Health meeting and ask us for a revote, and we'll see what we can do. But Mr. I don't Mann, think it's going to get answered right now. Mr. Mann, do you, have a, do you know of any future day when your next meeting is, or should they just contact the office? I don't have that up top of my head. I'm okay. I apologize. Please call the Board of Health office. I'm sure they can tell you. Great. I think it's after Memorial Day. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I know trash is a sensitive issue and uh, gave you a little time. But now, there being no motions, no proposed changes on that page, 
Uh, unless there's any discussion about any other departments, we're going to turn to the fourth and final page, which starts at the top of Department 6300. Excuse me, I believe there was a motion put forward by... Um, I'm sorry, Jan, did you have a motion out there? I'm sorry, Jan. The motion... The motion was to let's forego all of this and continue town trash pickup to the five condominiums that have had it for over 20 years. You're, you're saying that your motion was to have the town continue picking up your tr the trash for the five condominiums through December 31st? Well, no, because the continue it. The town manager offered because our fiscal year runs January to December, it fell. You know, we were going to get hit in the middle, not being able to balance our budget because our budget was already done. My understanding from the meeting on the third was that he would, the town manager would continue it through the end of December. There was no discussion of any kind that this would continue on into January of 2013. That is correct, as I understand it. And let me just, so let's just recite for the record. The, for 4,300, $1,046,985 will institute the new trash project with the 64-gallon barrel for trash, the 64-gallon barrel for recycling with the automated pickup. And it will include continued dumpster service for the five so-called grandfathered condominiums through December 31st, 2012. That's what this current budget provides. If anyone is asking for a proposal to, let's say, increase services beyond that date, I suppose you'd have to make a motion to change the dollar amount, because that is what we're actually talking about tonight, is the dollar amount. If you'd like to work out the parameters of the, of the, of the trash program itself, I think that best be brought up at a future Board of Health meeting, perhaps with the, with the um, town managers. We'll have a fall town meeting where this might come up again. Oh, goody. All right. Um, so, Jan, I, I, I can't offer, I can't accept the motion in its form as it is because we're talking about a dollar amount right now. If you'd like to ask them to tweak the program and the parameters, perhaps that might be better addressed at a Board of Health meeting. That's fine as long as I know that the Finance Department agrees because we were told there was no money in the budget for the condominiums to be kept through the end of December. The town manager is representing that this line item does include the continued trash service for the five grandfathered condominiums through December 31st, 2012. That's correct, he said. Can, can we make this open to continue into the next fiscal year? Uh, the only thing I can accept from you is a change to the dollar amount, and then you have to explain why. And Which would only go through December 31st for us, us or through the fiscal year of 2013 for the town. Town meeting can't change the program parameters right now. The only thing town meeting is voting on is the dollars allocated to this, to waste collection. So you could, you could theoretically make a motion to increase the dollar amount, but the Board of Health would still have to determine how to spend that and who to pick up and how. So I, I think, and so I don't want to be part of the debate, but I so think my understanding that this amount that the Finance Committee has does not include the continuation of trash pickup through December 31st, even though the town manager has agreed to that. Maureen Jansen, the Chairman of the Finance Committee. Ms. Pro that was my understanding, but I am willing to defer to the town manager. If he says that that covers it, that covers it. But it was my understanding it didn't. But like I said, I'm willing to defer to the town manager. It was your understanding it did not or it did? It was my understanding that that number did not include the six months for the condos. And I'm sorry if that was my, truly my understanding if I led you to believe that. But like I said, if the town manager says it is, it is. So I apologize if I gave you the wrong no, no, impression. It's not that it is. The Finance Committee's figures do not include the condominium's continuation of trash pickup through December 31st. The town manager has chosen to continue it through December 31st. Yes, but he has indicated the number on the sheet for trash. trash. I didn't know that. Okay. That's what he said earlier tonight. What I'm saying is I was under the impression it wasn't. So if I gave you the impression it wasn't, that is what I understood. But tonight, the town manager has affirmed that that number does include trash pickup for those six months. So I am willing to defer to the town manager. If he says it includes it, I was mistaken. And I'd like to recognize, I think, John. The town manager, John D'Agostino. 
just to confirm that the number that we are talking about will include an amount of money to pick up the condos until December 31st. Okay, so that's where we are, and that's what's going to be voted tonight unless someone comes up and picks a number out of the air and makes a motion to amend it and people approve it. Okay? I don't mean to discourage your questions, uh, but I just, this forum is for the budget. Yes, ma'am. I just have one question. Um, Maureen Rogers, Stonegate Square, condominiums. What is that dollar amount? Because what we're going to be voting on tonight is until fiscal thir uh, 13. So I'd like to know how much money that is for the next six months and why we can't double that to go to the next six months and give us some time. Mr. D'Agostino. We expect that that number is approximately 20, uh, 13,000 to 16,000 between now and the end of, of the fiscal year. You double that, it's about 30 to 32,000. It depends upon the tonnage, it depends upon how much is actually recycled. There are many variables in relationship to this calculation, uh, all of which are not scientific, and so therefore we have to take estimates. Then I put forward a motion to increase by 16,000 going from January 1st of 2013 to July or June 30th. This is, is it Morrissey? Maureen Rogers. Maureen Rogers, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Rogers makes a motion then to increase the line item 4300 by $16,000. However, <laughs> there is no $16,000 available, if I'm correct with the financial officers. Um, so, if this were to, you have a few options. You can just simply say, I, we're going to raise and appropriate $16,000 and leave it at that and see if the town meeting will approve it. You could also make a suggestion to, to take the $16,000 out of another account and put it into this account so we remain in the balanced budget. Or you can make a motion to increase this line item by $16,000 subject to the successful, uh, the, a successful override vote at a later date. I can't tell you what you want to do. I guess I would argue that the $16,000 is cheaper than if we start negotiating the bin price for the condominiums because as I understand it, single homeowners are allowed those bins as well and then we have to negotiate where will they be, where will the pickup be, how will that work. I appreciate Mr. D'Agostino's point that the condos have to decide where they'll be uh, technically, however, I don't believe that's town business, that's condominium business. So I propose instead of having the town buy the bins for us as is legally responsible that they instead spend that sixteen thousand dollars to remove the trash through fiscal year 2013. Okay that issue can be discussed at the Board of Health meeting about how to spend the money if this sixteen thousand gets appropriated. Mr. Dion, Chairman, uh, yeah, the moderator recognizes Selectman Tom, Thomas Dion. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and, and, and to Jan and Sue, I, I think this is something that is better dealt with at the special town meeting. The first hurdle you have is you have to address the Board of Health and ask them to reconsider their vote. The vote now is three to two. Nothing goes forward, even if you put $100,000 into the health department budget. And typically in, in the town, the special town meeting, money frees up, called free cash, and I think if you're successful with the Board of Health that they will look at that vote, rescind it, reconsider it, at that point you can come back and discuss whether you go for the full year or in perpetuity for condo. Right now I would, I would say that with the support of the Board of Selectmen, we support the town manager's effort to keep you whole. And what I mean by whole is through December 31st to pick up your trash because we know it's an issue, you budgeted for the full year, and we wanted to make sure that you did that. But I think at this point, it's really sort of a moot point to me because, again, the Board of Health needs to be addressed on that January vote that was three to two, and then, um, you, you know, you can continue to uh, see if you get any um, anywhere, um, you know, moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Dion. Yes, Mr. Franey. Me and Joe Franey, 12 Platt Street. Um, I thought Mr. Denovan had removed um, stop discussion just take a vote? Uh, he actually made a motion 
There was no vote pending. That was the problem. We had a motion to move the question. Now there is. Can we just move the question? Yes. Well, now that there's a motion, we can actually move the question. Well, the motion right now is to increase line 4300 by $16,000. That would be to raise an appropriate. Not to discourage or encourage anyone to vote either way, but the way it is actually presented to you, if the $16,000, and correct me if I'm wrong, financial people, if the $16,000 amendment is approved and then every other budget and every other article is approved as presented, we would be in, a, in an override position. We'd be 16000 about $15,000 short in our total budget. Um, and if that happened, well, we have to make cuts. We, just want to put that out there. I can't tell you how to, how to vote or what to motion. That is the motion, is to increase the trash budget, the waste collection budget by $16,000. Votes to say aye, we'll, we'll increase the $16,000, and no, we'll leave it at the printed number of $1,046,985. All those in favor of the mo Yes, Mr. Donovan. There is no such thing, but go ahead. The budget budget has a lot of leeway. I mean, we're talking about a $38 million budget, and it's my call, and it's, I have no problem. It's what the town wants to do. So there's a, a proposal for a $16,000 increase for the waste collection budget. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. No. The no's have it. 4,300 will remain as printed. Anything else on this page? Great. Move to the next page, quickly. 6300 Recreation Commission down to and including 9450 general fund transfers out. Are there any issues to be discussed on this last page, which has a total budget of 39,898,811.98? Anything to be discussed in this, in this uh, page? If not, and thank you for the discussion and the questions, I will now take one vote to approve the budget as presented. Since all the amendments failed, we will be approving the budget as presented in this budget handout. An, uh, an aye vote will approve the budget, a no vote will not approve the budget. All those in favor of approving the budget as presented in this budget handout, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. The uh, majority vote approves the town budget article three. Thank you very much. We're moving on now to article four, so you can go back into the joint, uh, the handout. That we're looking at article four, which is to see if the town will vote to authorize revolving funds for certain town departments as outlined in the chart printed in the booklet that's been presented to you, Maureen Jansen. Actually, Sean, there's, um, there is a slight change. Okay. Um, do you want me to just tell you what the change is, first of all? Okay. Um, we, we, the, the Board of Health has asked that we amend the, the use of funds column on their first, on, on the first um, of, their, of, of their revolving accounts here. So if you want me, I can, I just want to know what I should be doing. Did you? No, if you go down on the chart, on the sixth, the sixth item down, Board of Health, to the right is the $50,000 item? That's is that, correct. And, I'm sorry? On yes, it's on five, page yes. five. So Maureen, the Finance Committee is going to uh, suggest amended wording under the use of funds for that $50,000, and what might that wording be? Okay, in addition to the wording that's there, we would be adding monitoring of bulk items and outreach slash education for recycling. Monitoring of bulk items and outreach slash education for, for recycling. recycling. Yes, it's expanding the use of those funds. Any other amendments to the chart? No. And all the dollar amounts stay the same. So the That's Finance right. Committee's motion is to approve Article 4 as printed with the one amended amendment to add the language of uh, monitoring of bulk items and outreach ed slash education for recycling. Is there anything to be heard on Article 4 to establish and authorize the revolving counts, which we do on a yearly basis? If not, all those in favor of approving Article 4 as presented by the Finance Committee, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. It's unanimous. No, it's not. It's a majority. Thank you very much. We'll turn to Article 6. Article 5 was previously voted in the former town meeting. Article 6 is to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer of available funds of sum of 3,814.82 for sick leave buyback for retired firefighter. Maureen Jansen. The Finance Committee moves that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $3,814.82 for sick leave buyback for a retired firefighter. The Finance Committee makes a motion to approve Article 6 as presented. Is there anything to be heard on Article 6? Otherwise, all those in favor of approving Article 6, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. 
The ayes have it. It's unanimous. Article 7 to see the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from bill funds the sum of $23,614.87 for sick leave, personal time, and vacation buyback for the town accountant. Ms. Jansen. The Finance Committee moves that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $23,614.87 for sick leave, personal time, and vacation buyback for the town accountant. The Finance Committee makes a motion to approve Article 7 as presented. Is anything heard on Article 7? If not, all those in favor of approving Article 7, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. Interesting. I'm going to do a show of hands. All those in favor of approving Article 7, please raise your hands. Thank you. Put your hands down, please. All those opposing Article 7, please raise your hands. The ayes have it. Article 7 shall pass by majority vote. Article 10, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds of sum of $14,000 for student transportation services for students, evident students attending out of district vocational schools as non-resident students for 2012-2013 school year, Ms. Jansen. The Finance Committee moves that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $14,000 for student transportation services for Abington students attending out of district vocational schools as non-resident students for the 2012 2013 school year. Finance Committee makes a motion to approve Article 10. Anything to be heard or any questions on Article 10? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. It's unanimous. Article 12, the CF Town will grant an increase in allowance to all former employees retired under Chapter 32, Section 90C. This is the superannuation clause for employees who have worked at least 25 years in the town. Ms. Jansen. The Finance Committee motions that the town vote to pass over this article. Finance Committee makes a motion to pass over this article, which would be a motion to not approve this article. Is there anything to be heard? Anything to be heard in Article 12? If not, all those in favor of, a, of passing over this article to not approve it, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Article 12 is passed over. Article 13, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer of available funds the sum of $35,000 for the purchase of a replacement for the Station 1 radio antenna, including all expenses necessary related there too. Maureen Jansen. Uh, the Finance Committee had, is deferring to the Fire Chief with regard to this article. We're, under the, we're of the understanding that the Fire Chief will likely um, ask that this article be removed from, for consideration until the next special town meeting in the fall. Is that Chief John Nuttall signifies that he would like to remove this article. It would be taken up at a later town meeting. So there is no motion on the floor. Unless there's any need for a motion or discussion, we will move on. We will take no action on Article 13. We will move on to Article 17. Article 17, see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $162,500 with a like amount from the town of Rockland and to allow the treasurer with approval board of selectmen to borrow the money, uh, what's it for, to purchase land around the Hingham Street Reservoir and for the payment of costs incidental, incidental and related thereto. Ms. Jansen. The Finance Committee moves that the town vote to appropriate the sum of $162,500 with a like sum from the town of Rockland to purchase land around the Hingham Street Reservoir shown as Rockland Assessor's Map 9, Lot 9, and for the payment of costs incidental and related thereto, and to authorize Abington Rockland Joint Board of Water Commissioners to acquire said land by gift, purchase, eminent domain or otherwise for water protection purposes, and to meet this appropriation, the town treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow the sum under Chapter 44, Section 8, parentheses three of the general laws or any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town thereof and further to authorize appropriate town and Abington Rockland Joint Water Works officials to apply for accept and expend any grants that may be available for such purposes and to execute instruments and take such other action as may be necessary to effectuate the vote provided, however, that the amount authorized to be borrowed here under shall be reduced by any grant received for such purposes. Thank you, Ms. Jansen. The wording of the motion has to be very particular. If it is passed um, in order to borrow the money, the specific language, it, it's required by bond council, and that's what you just heard from Ms. Jansen. Uh, approval of this, because it's authorizing the town to, or the actually the Joint Waterworks to borrow money requires at least a two-thirds vote. Are there any questions about Article 18? Sorry, Article 17, I guess it is, um, to authorize them to borrow money to purchase the land near the reservoir. If not, all those in favor of approving Article 17, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. It's unanimous. Thank you. Article 19 is very similar. It's a different piece of land in Rockland, again adjacent or nearby the reservoir, Maureen. 
The Finance Committee moves that the town vote to appropriate the sum of $325,000 with a like sum from the town of Rockland to purchase land around the Hingham Street Reservoir shown as Rockland Assessor's Map 9, Lot 38, and for the payment of such, um, so for the payment of costs incidental and related thereto, and to authorize the Abington Rockland Joint Board of Water Commissioners to acquire said land by gift, purchase, eminent domain, or otherwise for water protection purposes. And as funding, therefore, that the town treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow said sum under Chapter 44, Section 8, parentheses 3, of the general laws as amended and supplemented, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town thereof, and further to authorize appropriate town and Abington Rockland Joint Water Works officials to apply for and accept and expand and expend any grants that may be available for such pur purposes and to execute instruments and take such other action as may be necessary to effectuate the vote, provided, however, that the amount authorized to be borrowed hereunder shall be reduced by any grant received for such purposes. Well done, Ms. Jansen. Is there anything to be heard on Article 19? Yes, sir. You state your name and address. Henry DiCarlo, 187 Central Street. I just want to clarify that on line two of the motion as printed in this booklet, that is a typo, I'm assuming, in 325. Yes. 25,000 is the correct amount. That's, Next. Yeah, that's correct, Henry. Um, it's such a similar motion that the, the text was brought over from, the, from Article 17. But the true amount is which is in the parentheses is the three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. I was supposed to mention that. Thank you, Henry. Three hundred twenty-five thousand is the amount to be authorized. Is there anything else to be heard on Article Nineteen? If not, all those in favor of approving Article Nineteen and the motion made by the Finance Committee, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed say no. It's unanimous. Article Twenty: See if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds the sum of four thousand dollars to a new day in lieu of services provided to sexual assault survivors and their families in the town of Abington. Um, th this, the amount uh, with regard to this article is actually in the budget, which is now just passed. So the Finance Committee motions that the town vote to pass over this article, being that it's already engaged in the. In so the by article. passing Article Three, we already paid for this four thousand dollars. We don't That's need correct. this article. So the motion would be to pass over and effectively cancel this article. All those in favor of, pa of passing over Article 20, please signify it by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. It's unanimous. That will end all of the remaining articles in the continued session of the annual town meeting. I'd like to uh, dissolve the annual town meeting as of 9 o'clock on the 21st of May. And at this time, I would like to call back into order, out of recess, the special town meeting. And I would now direct your attention to the face page of the handout which has special town meeting across the top. We've already opened the meeting earlier, so we would now move to begin some of the articles, or I think it's 10 articles in the special. But before we do, I wanted to give the floor briefly to a member of the Tricentennial Committee. Uh, they wanted to just give you some quick updates on the 30, 300th anniversary, some large, some events coming up. Jan, is that gonna be you, wearing another hat? You can come up here if you'd like, or wherever you wanna go. Nope. Jan Prowl, one of the co-chairs of the uh, Tricentennial Committee for the Steering Committee for the Town of Abington. We just want to give a quick update to everybody. The town's birthday is June 10th, and there's many things going on between now and then. Right now we're finishing our Mayor for a Day candidates. We have seven candidates, five from Abington, one from Rockland, and one from Whitman. The uh, voting ends on Sunday. Check out the ballot boxes at uh, the Ale House, Abington Bank, Bemis Drug, the Town Hall, and the Public Library. Vote for your candidate. We'll announce it next Tuesday evening at the Buckley Room at 7 o'clock. For those of you that are runners, uh, June 3rd, we have a half marathon through the three towns on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. Our parade on our anniversary, June 10th, begins at 1 o'clock from the area of St. Patrick's Square on the same parade route as uh, St. Patrick's Day. On uh, June 16th, we have a special commemorative stamp that the post office has done for us. We'll have a special day at the North Abington Post Office from 8 to 2. The big thing is uh, our field day and fireworks. Yes, the Tricentennial is having fireworks. June 23rd at Memorial Field. It will start in the afternoon with a children's parade at 3 o'clock. You can go on our website, get all the information. There is information at the town hall, the library. It's been sent out on email blast to all the schools in the three towns. 
There'll be a parade. We have music uh, free all afternoon, local civic organizations, sports organizations providing food. Bring your blanket, bring your chair. You know, come have a nice evening. Uh, the music will be, the late music will be Dale and the Duds in the afternoon. We will have uh, the South Shore Men of Harmony and the Island Grove Chorus, also known as the Sweet Adelines. We'll have a DJ there, the kids parade, there'll be games, there'll be, everything will be free. If you want to purchase food, it'll be at a reasonable cost. And again, by all local vendors. So come and enjoy some fireworks, which I know you haven't seen for a while. And then uh, we'll get on to other activities through the summer. And one of the big ones will be August 12th when there will be a fireman's muster up here at the high school area on a Sunday afternoon uh, with the three towns competing against each other. So we hope you'll come out for all the events that are going on. We look forward to celebrating Abington in a big way, so make sure that uh, our 300th is one to go down in history, and the commemorative book hopefully will entail a lot of that. Uh, that should be out sometime in June. If you have any questions, find any member of the Tricentennial Committee. We'll uh, give you anything you need, but uh, just uh, come out and celebrate Abington's 300th. Thanks. Thank you, Jan. I do encourage you to take part in the festivities. Uh, June 10th, Sunday again, is the 1 o'clock parade. Jack Bailey's running the parade. Same parade route. Should be a great time. And June 23rd, if you'd like to help out, uh, we, they do have the steering committee, but then they have a lot of volunteers to help on the planet, and we need volunteers to help work that day to help organize the little kids' games, uh, you know, just kind of have a lot of fun throughout the day. We're all praying for good weather. Uh, if you're interested in helping out with the field days, you can talk to Jan, you can talk to myself, talk to Nancy Reed. Uh, if you want to talk about the parade, Call Jack Bailey. Okay, uh, we will move on now. It's special town meeting, Article One, uh, which is to see if the town will amend the zoning bylaw and the zoning map as follows. And this is to insert updated information about the floodplain and the flood zone maps, the FEMA flood maps. Uh, this will require a two-thirds vote because it's a zoning amendment. And I'll defer now to for the motion to the uh, finance committee chair, Maureen Jansen. The Finance Committee moves that the town vote to amend the zoning bylaws and zoning map as set forth in Article. And I'm going to now read the entire article. Uh, just kidding. Uh, it's five pages uh, that has been reviewed, held at a public hearing by the Planning Board. Uh, are there any questions on Article 1? Yes, sir. Please state your name and address. Jim Dombrowski, 28 Temple Street. Who was the creator of this article? I want to know who to direct the questions to. I think the Mr. D'Agostino is going to attempt to answer the questions. I, I can have actually two questions. I can one, help them because. Well, one, what is the definition of a 100-year storm? I see nothing in here. Okay, the first question, Mr. D'Agostino, is who is the creator or the drafter of this article? Who created the article? I believe the actual language was crafted by a town council at the direction of EPA. In order for us to be able to provide flood insurance for those individual homeowners who have or are in uh, flood designated areas, if we do not accept this, they will not be eligible for flood insurance. My, my question goes back to what is a 100-year flood? Something that happens through, every 100 years, I don't know. <laughs> Which is? I, I don't know. Um, it, this, this was not crafted by me. Um, it was well, crafted. I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking the question, do you have a variety of different things here that state a 100-year flood and there's various calculations and there's various zones, and nowhere in here is there a definition for what a 100-year flood is? Well, on page two, 100-year flood is defined as C base flood, which is on page one that says base flood shall mean the flood having a 1% chance of being equal or exceeded in any given year. Which is? What is it? I have no idea. I don't know. I, I'm not sure who can answer that question, Jim, if, there's a, if it's an engineering question, a planning board question, or a, a FEMA question. Mr. Mollica, you want to try this? Paul Mollick, I think these are changes that are mandated by the uh, Army Corps of Engineers for uh, flood insurance. Uh, all banks have to comply with it. They change the maps and some, uh, some parcels are no longer in it, some are in it. Uh, right. And there's a process if you, if you think you should be exempt, how you can go through the, uh, the, uh, the, the paperwork to, to get exempt from it. So 
I, I would know, listen I to it, Mr. Donovan. I think you have Donovan. no choice on changing it. There's no choice. So there is no definition of what a 100-year storm event is. If that's the way you read it, I, I mean, I just read you what I read. I, I don't. On the, on the second page, my second question. On the second page, it says, flood hazard boundary map, FHMBM, shall mean an official map of a community issued by FEMA with the boundaries of the flood and related erosion areas that special hazards have been designated as zone A or E. Again, what is a zone E? There isn't any one. It's not on the map. The question is, what is a zone E? And I guess someone from FEMA would be able to answer that. Anyone from FEMA here tonight? No. Um, I don't know how, how you want to try to answer that, John, or anyone else? I can't answer it. Mr. Dion? Well, I'm, I, I'm looking through the definitions here, and I don't see a zone E. Right, I don't either. Top of page three, but I see zone A, A1 to 30. Zone AE, zone AH, AO, A99. AE has a different meaning. Hmm. Mr. Dion? Jim, I can't a answer your question specifically, but we can't give you the person that um, did uh, send a letter to the Board of Selectmen that uh, works for the uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation in Boston that I did talk to. I'm not sure of the definitions, but basically what, what he told me this article does is it takes uh, the old maps and replaces them with new digital maps and specifically to to um, um, for the emerging GIS or graphical information standards but all that information is based on specific engineered information storm events yeah I, I don't I'm not disputing you but all I'm saying for the for the residents here the significance to the residents is what I was told is the old maps were just replaced with digital maps there was no additional studies done um, and if you go and you look at them, I don't think much has changed as, as far as the floodplain is concerned that will affect property owners in Abington um, as far as flood insurance. Um, they cited that communities like Hull and Hingham and parts of Buzzard Bay, Buzzards Bay, they did new studies. So those homeowners would need to pay close attention to these new flood maps. But this was just taking the old and basically replacing them with, with new. Um, the, the other thing that I think, as Mr. Mollick has stated, is the purpose of the flood maps is for our national flood insurance program. I know what, I know what the purpose okay. of them is. But again, I had two questions. What is a zone E? And what is the definition of a 100-year storm uh, flood event? Yeah. If you go according to various DEP regulations, it's the 100-year storm event is the, classified as what they call a type three storm event, which is a seven inch rainfall in 24 hours. Is that what they're using here? Why isn't that included? Okay, I just have to ask, if, if that was the definition, what, what would be your suggestion to amend it? Because I, my, I, my I, understanding is that I'm this- asking, I'm, not, I'm not trying to amend it. I'm simply asking the question for clarification. Yeah. What is the actual storm event that they're citing in here? Yeah, again, I, I can't answer that. I don't think anybody... I don't know that anyone has the, tech, the expertise to answer it here. Uh, I know there was a public hearing with the planning board. I'm not sure if it was discussed in any detail at that point in time. Um, the town, I'm assuming the town engineer, uh, consulting engineer, did review this. Uh, Mr. Hughes, uh, member of the planning board. Bruce, do you want to stick your neck into this? Sure. Uh. My friend, so. okay. Bruce Hughes, 69 Randolph Street, uh, member of the admin planning board. We did get a chance to review these things. I'm a professional planner for the Old Colony Planning Council. It's very complicated, but we did get a chance to review it. I don't pretend to be an expert at it, but I can tell you it's very important that we pass this. You know, it's a requirement, and people have reviewed it, and there's maps up at the back of the room. I always say that there should be a, you know, definition acronyms when we have a thing like this. But uh, anyway, the planning board has reviewed it, and the maps are up at the back of the room, and it's important that we pass it. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Anything further on this Article 1? No. Okay, so this, the, uh, the vote will require a minimum two-thirds vote to pass. So all those in favor of approving Article 1 as presented in 
the, uh, the, the finance committee recommendations hand out. Please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed say no. It's unanimous. Thank you. Article 2, to see if the town will vote to transfer 109,173.47 from the water conservation account to fund Abington's portion of joint waterworks pension costs for fiscal year 2008. Maureen. Um, the finance committee is actually deferring recommendation or the motion on this to the water commissioners. Is Dan Kelly in here? You're going to withdraw it? The superintendent of the water department, the water manager, has requested this be withdrawn. It may be uh, deferred to a, a later town meeting. So there'll be no motion made unless someone wants to jump up and make a motion. Seeing there be none, we will take no action on Article 2 and we'll proceed to Article 3. Article 3 is to see if the town will transfer from water and designated fund balance to some of uh, 15,000 for the purpose of continuing the survey and testing in accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts drinking water regulations. Maureen. The Finance Committee vote uh, moves that the town vote to approve Article 3 as printed in this warrant. The Finance Committee makes a motion to approve Article 3. Anything to be heard in Article 3? If not, all those in favor of approving Article 3, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. It's unanimous. Article 4, to see if the town vote to transfer from water undesignated fund balance the sum of 1,917.63 for the payment of a 2011 bill from Columbus Gas of Massachusetts. Maureen. The Finance Committee moves that the town vote to approve Article 4 as printed in the warrant. This will require a nine-tenths vote, uh, so if it's not unanimous, I will have to ask it to be a standing count uh, under the law because it's a bill from a prior fiscal year. Is there anything to be heard on Article 4? Once again, just as a, as a pleasant reminder, if it's not unanimous, you're going to stand and be counted. All those in favor of approval on Article 4, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. It's unanimous. Thank you. Article 5, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow the sum of 250000 like amount from the town of Rockland to remove and control algae from Great Sandy Bottom Pond, etc., etc. Maureen. The Finance Committee moves that the town appropriate $250,000 to be expended with a like amount from the town of Rockland to, to remove and control algae at the, green, at the Great Sandy Bottom Pond, God bless you, and for all costs incidental and related thereto, and to meet said appropriation, the town treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, is hereby authorized to borrow said $250,000 pursuant to GLC 44, Section 8, 7C, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes therefore. Again, this will be authorizing some borrowing, so will require a minimum two-thirds vote. Is there anything to be heard on Article 5? If not, all those in favor of approving Article 5 as presented by the Finance Committee's motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. It is unanimous. Article 6, to see the town vote to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the Board of Selectmen to borrow a sum of money in anticipation of revenue so as to allow the town to begin work on roadway improvements under the State Chapter 90 program prior to the release of funds by the state for such purposes. Ms. Jansen. The Finance Committee moves that the town vote to approve Article 6 as printed in the warrant. This is a majority vote. Is there anything, any questions in Article 6? If not, all those in favor of Article 6, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. It's unanimous. Article 7. Article 7, I'm going to recuse myself from this article. I'm going to ask that the Deputy Moderator, Bob Kelly, please take the helm, along with Clerk Linda Adams. I'll step down. Article 7 is to see if the town will vote to amend the town bylaws by adopting a new bylaw establishing certain standards of conduct for town employees and offices as follows. And further, to authorize the town clerk to assign said bylaw <coughs> a proper number consistent with the numbering system in said town bylaws. That's the preamble. I'm not going to read all of the, uh, all of the information. Uh, it's there for you to go over it. There's been public hearings on it. Ms. Jansen. The Finance Committee moves that the town vote to pass over this article. Ms. Jansen moves to pass over, the, over Article 7. Is there any discussion on Article 7? Yes, please take the microphone and identify yourself. Warren Elliott, 585 Hancock Street. The town of late has enjoyed some notoriety in news articles and on editorial pages concerning uh, uh, transparency within the committees and whatnot. I would think that at this juncture that the town should vote for this article to show that we do have transparency in any of the town functions that go are occurring within within the town business. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak on the article? 
please uh, take the mic and identify yourself. Mr. Burbine. Andy Burbine, 30 Lantern Lane, uh, member of the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen voted tonight three to two uh, to take an action um, to delay this until the fall town meeting, and we hope the, uh, the body will accept that. We think there's still some more tweaking that needs to be done, um, and we also think that we need to adopt uh, another bylaw, or possibly a new policy as far as providing information to appointees, to reappointees, and to elected officials as far as what their obligations are, um, what their responsibilities are. And I think that's what generated a lot of this, is the fact that a lot of people just don't know what needs to be done when they get elected as far as uh, special municipal employee status, ethics laws, and that sort of thing. So we would like to um, delay this until the fall town meeting, ask the bylaw review committee to take a, another look at this, but also in conjunction with that to, um, to adopt a, uh, a bylaw regarding information that needs to be provided to elected officials and to appointed officials. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burbine. Anyone, anyone else interested in speaking on the article? There being no others, I'd like to have a, more, have a vote on the article. All those in favor of, first of all, I want to make sure we understand that passing over is a positive vote here. If you vote yes, we will pass over the article. I have a motion on the floor, Mr. Franey, from the Finance Committee. You didn't make a motion. Well, the positive motion is the pat. We, a positive vote will pass over this. Did you make a motion? You didn't. You just said you wanted to withdraw it. So I have a motion on the floor I want to act on. The motion is to pass over Article 7. Sure. I don't think so. Did he? He asked to vote to approve. Okay. All right. I will give you that. So the motion now would be to approve Article 7. I'm confused as to what we're voting for. Okay. We're we're voting for the, the first motion was by the Finance Committee to pass over the article. It was further made, another motion was to approve it. We normally would take the positive vote first. So right now we're working on a positive vote to approve Article 7. A yes vote will indicate you're approving Article 7. A no vote means you want to pass over it or defeat it. Mr. Mr. Riley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm taking Stepping down and I'm speaking against this bylaw, not because I'm against ethics whatsoever. Of course, I support ethics as, as a volunteer and as an attorney. Not only am I bound by the state ethics law, but I'm bound by the, own, the ethics rules of, of, of be, just being an attorney. My concern is not really with the attorneys and the professionals here. It never has been. It's really how broad this bylaw is, and I really don't think that that's been represented well or explained well to the residents of Abington. And I think that's why so many people are so vigorously opposing this bylaw. In a small town like Abington, people who volunteer for town committees or town positions are very likely to also be very involved in other segments of this community, perhaps as a volunteer coach for youth sports or the AEF or the St. Vincent de Paul, the VFW, or as we heard, a condo association or Cub Scouts or the Boosters. Perhaps you just occasionally volunteer your time to help an elderly neighbor. This bylaw sets a trap for all of you. Supporters of the so-called ethics bylaw dismiss it as a minimal inconvenience because it only requires a town volunteer or an employee to file a form in the town clerk's office to list the name of the town volunteer, the name of the person being represented, the subject matter of the representation. As a real estate attorney, no matter whether I'm a town volunteer or not, I already do file forms at the town clerk's office, which discloses all that information anytime I appear before the zoning board, for example. So this is not a new requirement for me or for other local attorneys or local, local surveyors. But for anyone who's really truly read this bylaw and who knows its history and why it was written in, in the first place about a year ago, and who understands how it actually can be applied and enforced, we're 100% against this bylaw. It's not about ethics. We firmly believe this will become a weapon to be used to humiliate and embarrass volunteers, and in some cases to even invade the privacy of Abington residents. Now, town council has made it clear to us that the responsibility of the it's, it is the responsibility of the volunteer or of the town employee to figure out how to properly comply with state laws, and they also have to figure out when they need to file this special Abington form if this proposed bylaw gets approved. 
In the following examples, if you fail to file this form, this new form that only exists in the town of Abington, you will have violated a so-called ethics bylaw and be subject to enforcement. So for example, if you're an architect or a plumber or a carpenter or electrician and you also volunteer as a member of the Board of Library Trustees or the SAGE Committee, and you later meet with our town inspectors at the building department and pull a permit for your customer, or if you go with your client to a zoning board or a conservation hearing, you will not be in violation of state ethics laws, but you'll now be in violation of Abington's new bylaw. If you're a member of the Lions Club and you also volunteer as a member of the planning board or as a member of Park and Rec, and you meet with the health agent to obtain a permit to sell food as the Lion Club's fundraiser, or if you have to select them for a permit for a fundraiser, you don't violate state ethics, but you now violate this bylaw. If you're a veteran and you volunteer on the board of memorial trustees, and you meet with the veterans agent on behalf of another veteran who has a desperate need of a medical or financial services, you don't violate state ethics, but now you violate this local bylaw. If you're a school custodian and you appear before the Strawberry Valley Golf Course Committee and ask for a permit to run a golf tournament for a scholarship in your son's name, you will not be in violation of state ethics, but now you violate this bylaw that only would exist in the town of Abington. All these examples are actual examples. And remember, just because town council has been asked to write and rewrite and rewrite this bylaw, town council does not take a position to support or to oppose this bylaw. And remember, if, this, if you're a volunteer and this bylaw passes, you have to figure out how it applies. If you volunteer as a deputy moderator and you served for only th over 30 years as the treasurer of the Celsius Votech High School, next year if you appear before the Finance Committee on behalf of the Celsius Votech like you've done for over 30 years and you forget to file, you don't violate state ethics, but you violate this new bylaw. If you volunteer on any town committee and you happen to also be in charge of the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and in the 34th year next year you go back in front of the selectmen and ask for your parade permit, or if you volunteer for a town committee and you ask for the park department for a field permit for next year's Relay for Life, you now violate this so-called ethics bylaw. This isn't an ethics bylaw, this is a filing bylaw. If you remember the Summer Concerts Committee, and you also happen to be a president of your board of trustees in the condominium, and you meet with the Board of Health or the town manager to get trash service reinstalled at your home, you don't violate the state ethics law, but now you're gonna violate Abington's brand new bylaw that doesn't exist in any other city or town in Abington. If you mow lawns for the town, you're a librarian, you meet with a tax collector to discuss your elderly neighbors or your mother's personal financial crisis and try to work out a tax payment plan for, as a concerned friend or a confidant, you don't violate state ethics, but now you violate this bylaw. You're supposed to go file a form to publicly say, my mother's having financial difficulties, my mother's in a health crisis, and I have to disclose that. This goes much further than people even consider. Privacy. If you volunteer for a town board and you know that your neighbor is being abused, a wife or kids, and you now want to take them or go with them to a police officer for a protective order, you'll now be in violation not of state ethics, but you violate this new bylaw. In Abington, if this would be approved, you'd have to file a form to publicly notify that you're helping out your friend and to disclose who it is that you're going to report to the police department, potentially putting privacy and safety at risk. Despite the fact they've called this an ethics bylaw, I hope you understand now why people have consistently opposed this bylaw, but we are not opposing ethics at all. It's no wonder why no other city or town has ever approved such a bylaw as the one being uh, uh, proposed here tonight. The people who volunteer and work for this town are good people. We don't always agree with each other, but I think you'll agree that we do respect each other. We deserve a government which tries to attract more volunteers, not to punish more volunteers. State ethics.